Hi, welcome to Avocet Math. In this video, we're going to look at a detailed example of a permutation problem and a combination problem. I found this example very helpful when I first learned these concepts, and this example also illustrates the advanced counting strategy of overcounting by a known multiple. And you'll see what I mean by that in a few minutes. But before I get started, I just want to mention that in mathematics, the words permutation and combination are related but distinct concepts. However, in common English language usage, the words permutation and combination are used almost interchangeably, so much so that I sometimes trip up myself and uh, just need you to be on the lookout for that. So with that, let's take a look at our first permutation example. So in this example, we're going to consider the case of five runners in the finals of some type of running event, and we'll call the runners A, B, C, D, and E. And in this example, we're interested in finding the number of different ways we can select three runners to receive the gold, silver, and bronze medals. So in this case, I'll represent the gold, silver, and bronze medals with three bins that I'm going to label 1, 2, and 3 for first, second, and third. So to get a handle on this counting problem, it's often helpful to write out an example list of some of the different arrangements we'll consider as distinct arrangements for the purpose of this counting problem. So let's consider the case where we've selected runners A, B, and C, and we place them in the positions gold, silver, and bronze. We'd also have to consider the case where maybe C and B are swapped. We have to consider the case where we give perhaps B the gold medal followed by A and C. And likewise, B, C, A, C, A, B. And finally, the case where C receives the gold, B receives the silver, and A receives the bronze. So that seems to exhaust all the possibilities that we can arrange A, B, and C. So let's uh, swap out uh, C for runner D and see how that looks. So we would have to consider the case where A gets the gold, B gets the silver, and D now gets the bronze, and we have to start mixing that up. And let's see, BAD, BDA, and DAB, and DBA. So that kind of exhausts all the ways that we could arrange the uh, runners having selected runners A, B, and D. And as a final example, let's consider the case where I've selected runners, say, C, D, and E. And let's go down that list. We'd also have to consider CED as an arrangement. Uh, DCE, DEC, and ECD, and finally EDC. And so this gives us a good idea as to exactly what we're counting as a distinct arrangement for the purpose of uh, this permutation. And this gives us a clue as to how we might count this now, because we basically see that for these positions, we're counting all possible uh, arrangements for the runners in each of the positions. And that allows us to basically go down this row of metal positions, gold, silver, and bronze, and look at the possible number of uh, choices that are available at each metal position. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's look at position one, uh, where we can basically select all possible runners, or any of the possible runners. So we have five possible choices for the uh, gold medal position. Now, having chosen the gold medal position, we'll only have four possible runners left to select for the silver medal. So that gives us four possible choices for the silver medal. And lastly, having chosen the gold and the silver, the bronze medal will have three available runners remaining for that choice. So let's put the number three there. Now, it's important to realize here that uh, these choices are not independent and that the choice that's available for say the silver medal, does depend on what we've selected for the gold medal. So for instance, our ability to choose say runner C or D for the silver medal depends on whether the runner C or D was selected for the gold medal. However, and this is very important, the number of available runners that's available at the silver and the, and the bronze positions is independent of the choices for the previous two positions. 
And that's what's key. The number of the choices that are available at the silver and the bronze position are independent of what particular runners were chosen for a previous position. And that allows us to use the multiplication principle to compute the total number of arrangements as being P, standing for permutation, of five items selected three at a time as being five times four times three, which is equal to 60 in this case. Now we can also easily extend this calculation to find the number of permutations of all five runners. So let's imagine a fourth and a fifth bin in our calculation and see how many ways we might be able to choose the fourth position. So having chosen the gold, silver, and bronze, there will only be two runners left, and we'll basically have to select from those two runners. So we have two available choices for this fourth position. And again, having chosen all four previous positions, there's only one remaining choice for the final position. And so from that, we can basically see that the number of ways to arrange these five objects all together is given by this number 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And some of you will recognize that as being uh, 5 factorial. So we have this simple rule now that the number of ways to arrange the five objects is given by 5 factorial. And it's not hard to imagine that if we had n objects, that uh, the calculation would yield the number n factorial as being the total number of arrangements or permutations of those n objects selected n at a time. So this is a very good uh, uh, base from which we can now use to uh, calculate our combination example. So let's look at the example again of five students now instead of runners from which we need to select a group of three students to visit a nearby school. And we're interested in finding the number of different ways that we can select this group of three students. So now in this example, we don't really care about the order or the arrangement of, of the students within the group of three. So let's just sort of represent that with now three bins which don't have a label. And that's sort of connotes the idea that we, if we were to select, say, A, B, and C, then we would just put the A, the B, and C into the three bins, and we wouldn't care what the arrangements were of, say, A, B, and C within these bins. And this gives us a very important clue as to how we might count this, because we can look to the permutation examples as a kind of a clue as to how we might calculate the combinations. And we realize that the number of combinations is going to be fewer than the number of permutations because we're not counting the different ways that the A, B, and C can be arranged within these three bins. We're only counting the number of ways that the A, B, C could be selected from the group of five. And so from that, we can sort of look to this as sort of a guide as to how we might calculate that. Because what we notice from our permutation list is that for every selection of three distinct runners, we basically counted six different arrangements within the group of three that we counted separately for the purpose of the permutation. But for the purpose of the combination, we'll consider that all six of these arrangements is the same combination. And likewise, for the combination or the permutation of A, B, and D, there are six arrangements that we count separately for the purposes of a permutation. But we're, for the purpose of the combination, we're going to consider this a count of one combination. And finally, that's true for the last case as well. And it's not too hard to imagine that for every possible selection of three distinct runners, we will have counted the permutations six times as we should. But for the purposes of the combination, we would only count this as one combination. And so this gives us the insight that in order to uh, count the number of combinations, we can simply use the number of permutations and realize that Every time we count the permutations, we're overcounting the number of combinations by a factor of 3 factorial. So in this case, this list is larger by a factor of 3 factorial. This list is larger by a multiple of 3 factorial. And this list is larger by a multiple of 3 factorial for the purposes of counting the combination. 
And that leads us to a very simple result in that we could count the number of combinations which we denote C, five objects chosen three at a time, as the simple permutation corrected down by the multiple by which we overcounted the permutation for the purposes of calculating the combination. So we take five times four times three as being the permutation calculation divided by the number of ways that we've overcounted for the purposes of the combination. So essentially it's five times four times three divided by one times two times three, and that's equal to 10 in this case. So this is a very powerful counting strategy now where we've calculated the combination as just being an adjustment of the permutation calculation and that makes for a very simple result and one lesson to take away from this example is just how easy it is to compute permutations and combinations of specific cases in the case of a permutation we're merely taking a string of consecutive decreasing numbers starting from the total number of objects so in this case five times four times three and if you want to form the combination, you simply divide the permutation number down by a string of increasing consecutive integers starting from 1. In this case, 1 times 2 times 3. It's just that simple, and you don't need much in the way of formulas. In fact, you want to be able to reproduce this example without resorting to formulas, which can sometimes obscure the underlying principles. And it's this kind of ground up understanding that performs best on the AMC examples. So I hope this example helped and I'll see you at the next video. Take care.